Here's what I think is a very interesting clock from the late 1970s. The maker of this clock is unknown. As you can see, it's marked C slash slash Z V. I'm not sure what that means, but maybe one of you guys out there does. I'm also not sure if this thing was a kit or a factory built clock, but I'm leaning pretty heavily towards kit just based on the somewhat questionable soldering in here. There were a couple of uh, cold solder joints that I had to repair and one connection that wasn't even soldered at all. I'm going to plug it in and uh, you guys can watch it turn on. Look how the digits fade in. This time the clock came up with a valid time, but there's no guarantee of that with the clock ship that they used. The MM5314N, which is dated 704, that translates to the fourth week of 1977. This chip was quite popular in clocks uh, of both the kit built and factory assembled variety from the early 1970s to the late 1970s. You can find that chip in quite a few things, which is a little odd, actually, because there's uh, more fully featured chips that were available at the same time. This one has no alarm option, and like I said, it comes up in an invalid state. Now, on the bottom here are two buttons. This one here is the slow set, which uh, rapidly advances the seconds. Next to it is the fast set, which rapidly advances the minutes. This clock chip also has the option of a hold control, but unfortunately they did not fit one. I could of course add one, but I decided not to modify this thing. You can see that the VFD tubes in this clock still glow quite brightly, unlike a lot of other early VFD clocks. These aren't the tubes you typically see in this particular model. They're NEC DG10ENs. You can see that these tubes have an extra pair of segments that is not used. As for repairs to this clock, all I had to do besides repair those uh, dodgy solder connections was change out that electrolytic capacitor you see uh, right here. This resistor probably should be replaced. You can see it's burned up. It's in the filament string. But despite its poor state, it's still doing its job, so I guess there's no real urgent need to change it. This clock is multiplexed, and you can see the six transistors along there that uh, switch on each digit one by one. Even the AC cord is transparent. I'm not sure why it comes in over there and then has wires running across the circuit board to the transformer, but it's not really meant to be handled when it's disassembled. The transformer here is also a bit undersized for this clock. It runs fairly hot, though not as hot as that resistor apparently. You can see that it's scorched the board. On the underside there's a few additional markings just kind of showing you where things are on the clock chip, uh, especially optional things. You can see it says 50 hertz and 24 hour there. As those markings suggest, the clock can be rewired for 50 hertz instead of 60 hertz and 24 hour time instead of 12 hour time like it's currently set up for. I personally prefer 12 hour time just because that's what I'm used to. This clock chip has no AM or PM indication option. But since it also has no alarm, there's really no need for one. If you're not sure whether it's AM or PM, then you're really out of sorts. Well, that's all there is to show on this clock. I'm glad that for once I don't need to disassemble it to show it off. I wish there was more transparent electronics like this. It adds a bit of visual interest. Well, thanks for watching.